Today is the 2nd of April 2020. Welcome to Walking the Way. My name is Ray. I want to say thank you to everyone for listening in as we continue to explore what it means to have a regular rhythm of worship together. And if you are joining us for the first time, let me explain that each episode follows a really easy, simple pattern of a mixture of prayer, scripture and music. It's easy to pick up as we go along. But before we start, don't forget if you want to download the script for today, smash the download button in the show notes, you'll get a PDF of today. If you'd like to support Walking the Way, then the link to our giving page is down below. We would really appreciate any support you give us. And then if you'd like more information about me or the podcast, head to rayborrett.co.uk. Again, link in the show notes. We always start each episode of Walking the Way with our opening prayer. So let's begin, shall we? This is the day that you made, Lord. Permeated through and through with your beauty, full of your faithfulness, full of your holiness. And so we give you thanks. We open our hearts and our minds and our spirits to your transforming presence. It is not easy to open ourselves to your presence, God. Our hearts are restless, finding it hard to settle into your love. Our minds wander, caught up in urgent cares and worries. Our spirits are uneasy before the mystery of your holiness. It's not easy, and we are grateful that you don't give up on us. Even as we turn away from you, you keep turning towards us. So here, now, in this time together, we ask you to move among us, awakening us to your spirit reaching out to us, calling to us, showing us your new creation in our midst. This is the day that you've made, God. We are open to your grace, your love, your summons to join your holy work. In Jesus' name. Amen. Revelation 21.4 He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. At the moment I'm one of those people who are desperately trying not to watch or listen to too much of the news. If only for my own mental health. But yesterday me and Mrs. B watched the daily briefing from the Prime Minister's office in Downing Street. And after a day of conversations about providing food parcels to those who will need them, a funeral planning session and discussions with funeral directors about how funerals are going to change, what I saw in the briefing really began to get to me. But it was the death rate that really got me. As of yesterday, there were 2,352 deaths in the UK. And globally, 47,208. Maybe it was the conversation about funerals and changes to how people will mourn that really contributed to how I felt anxious. But then I read an amazing tweet from Jessica Brody, who had written a blog for I Believe listing 10 scriptures to help with the anxiousness. I'll put the, show, I'll put the link into the show notes so you can read it yourself. But the final verse was today's verse from Revelation. I'll read it to you again. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. It's a timely reminder for me, that, it, for me at least, that while there is hardship and grief here, for those who love God, there is hope. This is the promise that there will be no more hardship, no more pain. People everywhere are scared. But the antidote to that isn't more information or news or inspirational Instagram posts. It's the promises of God that are eternal and true. Hang on to them like a life jacket if that's what's needed to get you through this crisis. And as I read that blog post last night, I just felt my mind beginning to calm down. Hang on to them. They are true. We're going to have our first piece of music just to give us some time to center our thoughts on God. And then we're going to get into our Bible readings for today. And in today's Bible readings, we read about the crucifixion of Jesus.
Let's ask God to speak to us through the scriptures this morning. Father, prepare our hearts as we read scripture today. Help us to see you and your will and your purpose in what we read. Make it real to us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Bible readings this week are taken from the New Revised Standard Version, and we're reading Luke 23. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man, but they were insistent and said, he stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee where he began even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learnt that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time, because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length. But Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day Herod and Pilate became friends with each other, before they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders and the people, and said to them, You bought this man as one who was perverting the people. And here I have examined him in your presence, and have not found this man guilty of any of the charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he has sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged, and release him. But they all shouted out together, Away with this fellow! Release Barabbas for us! This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again. But they kept shouting, Crucify! Crucify him! A third time he said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over as they wished. As they led him away, they seized the man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nurse. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. The people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others? Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription above him, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself, an ass. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation, and we indeed have been condemned justly? For we are getting what we deserve for our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, 
and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for the spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the woman who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Now there was a good and righteous man named Joseph, who, though a member of the council, had not agreed to their plan and action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea, and he was waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and laid it in a rock-hewn tomb which no one had ever been laid in. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was coming. The woman who had come with him from Galilee followed, and they saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath, they rested according to the commandment. We're going to have our second piece of music just to give us some time to think about the bits of scripture that have caught our attention. And after music, we're going to say our prayers for the day. Before we pray, just a reminder that if you would like us to pray for you, then drop us a line through the usual channels, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, email, our voicemail service. They are all there. The links are in the show notes. If you click the show notes, it'll take you to wherever you need to go. We would love to pray for you. Today, we've been asked to pray for Trevor, who recently had an aortic aneurysm repair and is back at home recovering, but has now gone on to develop cellulitis. So if we can remember Trevor in our prayers, please. And as always, we continue to pray for Ben and Rebecca. So let's pray for Trevor and Ben and Rebecca, shall we? Loving God, we thank you for Trevor that he survived that really dangerous operation as he had his aneurysm repaired. But as the want of these things, Lord, he's picked up something else. And so, Father, we pray for healing for Trevor, for the cellulitis, that the cellulitis would go away. We remember today also, Lord, Ben and Rebecca as they continue their struggle to be a married couple separated by thousands of miles in jail bars. Lord, that you would be Ben's strength and his hope. And our prayer for today. God the Father, your will for all people is health and salvation. And so we praise you and thank you, O Lord. God the Son, you came that we might have life and might have it more abundantly. 
So we praise you and thank you, O Lord. God the Holy Spirit, you make our bodies the temple of your presence. And for that we praise you and thank you, O Lord. Holy Trinity, one God, in you we live and move and have our being. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come to you. For all who have died as a result of COVID-19, rest eternal grant to them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. For all those who grieve the death of family, friends and citizens, give them courage and strength to meet the days ahead, O Lord, and the consolation of your love. Pour out your healing grace on all who are sick, injured or disabled, that they may be made whole. Grant to all who seek your guidance and to all who are afraid, anxious or overwhelmed a knowledge of your will and an awareness of your presence. Give peace, courage and hope to all who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Restore to wholeness whatever is broken by human sin in our lives, in our country and in our world. Bless the doctors, nurses and all others who minister to the sick. Keep them safe and healthy and grant them wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. Send down upon political leaders, Lord, the spirit of wisdom, charity and justice that with steadfast purpose they may faithfully serve in their offices to promote the well-being of all people. And give wisdom, creativity and perseverance to all medical professionals, researchers, policy makers and leaders as they respond to this pandemic. Guide us in finding and developing the resources, medical skill, and political will to contain and end this kind of crisis. And open our eyes to see that you have made of one blood all peoples of the earth, and that our life and death are with each other. Open our hearts and hands to assist and care for those who will lose their jobs or be affected financially by COVID-19. Give us compassion for those in need, Patience in this time of distress and love for our neighbours. Let our hearts not be afraid. You are the Lord who does wonders and you have declared your power amongst the people. With you, O Lord, is the well of life, and in your light we see light. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies look with compassion upon us, and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give the glory, the power, and the honor, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And we say together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us now and forevermore. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.